see you out tonight in the house of the Lord. We appreciate you being out to our Wednesday night prop night service. And man, we're just honored to have you here. And I uh, hope you've had a great week so far. Man, we are, we are 12 days away from the big day. So it's pressing down on us. And uh, we, just, we just hope that uh, you're having a Merry Christmas and not Martha. Martha's running loose. I don't know if she's running loose from where you are or not. But, uh, you know, Martha, or get on you. Get on the best of us at times. Amen? So uh, we got to work hard to have a Merry Christmas, and it's great to be able to have Wednesday night to be able to come out and do that. It's good to have Shane, his dad, and stepmother with us visiting tonight from up in Michigan. I know they're glad to be down here in Florida. Get out of that cold weather. Whereabouts in Michigan y'all from? Is that close to Ypsilanti? No, no, okay, that's where Jerry and Lydia are from up in Ypsilanti, but other side, other side, one side, other side. All right, well, good to have you. And Barb, good to see you tonight. Appreciate you being out tonight and everybody that's out, and uh, we're going to get ready to get started up just in a minute. We're going to do a song, get loosened up. Miss Jean, are you ready? Let's all stand and do a song. Good evening. Okay. Okay, we're going to try another Christmas song tonight. All right. Miss Lorraine.
look now for black and golden hours come swiftly on the wings. Oh, rest beside the weary world and hear the angels sing. We're trying to get the volume fixed on the, on the Facebook there, and Marina's working diligently on that. We appreciate everybody letting us know that, but uh, I think the volume's good here. Well, I appreciate my grandson. Don't you just love grandkids? Yeah. I have been around and talked and visited with so many people here this evening, and he comes in and looks at me and says, you got food on your chin. <laughs> I said, what? He said, you got food on your chin. I said, How come nobody else told me? That's what I don't understand. Now, here I'm talking to everybody and right up in your face, and, no, and, and nobody else told me. If, if the pastor has food on his face, please let him know. My goodness. Thank you, Broden. I tell you what. I don't know. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what it was, but I'm glad that my grandson was able to tell me to get that off of there. But uh, man, oh man, well, again, that's a great way to start, isn't it? You should have told me that. I'm looking at some of these people I've been talking to. Nobody wanted to tell the pastor that. Anyhow, don't forget now, we got the Christmas dinner coming up Friday night at 6 o'clock. We're looking forward to that. And that's going to be a, that's going to be really nice over at Buckhead Ridge. I'm going to try to put a one call out tomorrow to make sure you've got the address. If you don't have it, take a picture tonight so you can have it. And then the kids' program is on Sunday morning on the 17th. That'll be this Sunday morning. We're looking forward to that. That means we need a couple of you good, strong young men to move this and this after church tonight so we can get that out of the way so they can have the, have the front for Sunday morning. And that'd be great. Don't let me forget that. Some of you guys put that on your to-do list tonight because time service is over. I'll, be, I'll forget about it. But just charge up here and take care of it. Amen. And then Christmas Eve communion at 6 o'clock on Christmas Eve. I'm looking forward to that. That's all, always a great time. As I said, I can't believe we're just 12 days away from uh, Christmas, but we're going to do our best to get everything ready to go and hope that you have a Merry Christmas. Amen? Amen. Well, don't forget to major. Major's having foot surgery in the morning. want to pray for the major that all goes well with him. And then Shirley Mars having her surgery on Wednesday the 20th. That'll be one week from tonight. I talked with Shirley today. She's a little bit discouraged and down and out. Her, her daughter, was they were hoping, was going to be able to come down and spend some time with her and help take care of them, and she can't come. And uh, I know that's got to be a disappointment to them. But, we, you know, we, we do the best we can. We just keep loving and praying and, and doing what we can. So thank everybody for what you're doing, and we may have to continue doing that for a little while longer. Continue to pray for Lydia Taylor's Aunt Joanne. She broke her hip. And she's 82 years old, and she's in a hospital, and they have cleared her for surgery. So we want to pray that uh, Miss Joanne has a surgery that goes well. Then Angie Cook, that's Barb's daughter, Shirley's sister's daughter, is in the hospital, and she's got uh, some uh, heart issues. A heart cath showed no changes, but pray for her. Uh, Brother Kanuki has his other knee surgery on Friday, the 15th. So we want to pray for him. And Miss Tina, the, the Tina, 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 boy, I can't get Tina and Tina separate. Pray for them that all goes well with them. Will Allen, Shelly Dixon's brother-in-law, is having had uh, was to start kidney dialysis, but don't know if he can take it because he's got a bad heart. So they put a port in him. Pray for him. Mike Conacher, back home, one of the one of the funeral directors told me to sent me a message today and said that his daughter's having surgery on the 20th and wanted her remembered her name is Rachel and then Teresa Durance fell what's the update on WJ's wife uh, she had so it's going to take surgery so pray for Teresa and WJ uh, a couple of surgeries wow Wow, so uh, good to see Leanne back. The kids are, are better, but she left them home again tonight. But we're glad that they're better and glad you're back. 
and Evelyn is traveling and continue to pray for Bill and Marge. It all goes well with them and, of course, Bill and Shirley. And then uh, Jeff Cook and my preacher buddy's son, who's also a preacher who uh, had a port put in, and they started dialysis on him this week. And so he's a bad diabetic also. And then Andy Wortham uh, had surgery, and he's recuperating from that. That's Barb's son-in-law. And then Joyce Sippert's cousin's wife, Joan, she's haven't heard no update, so still. Letitia's on a ventilator, so pray for her. And uh, wow, just got a lot of people we need to pray for. Uh, I'm trying to see. I had somebody down here. I'm trying to run down to see where that is. Patty Fussell, we'd been praying for. Been in the hospital two months. She passed away, uh, so pray for her. That's Charlotte Blair's brother-in-law's sister. So pray for them. But we've got a lot of folks on the prayer list, and uh, I hope you're looking over that and praying for people on, on a daily basis. Lift them up a couple times a day if you can because definitely people need prayer. And, you know, it's a, it's a, tough, it, it's a tough time that you're on a lot of people anyhow. You know, I love Christmas. I tell you that every time I get up. I love it, love everything about it. I'll probably say that again in a minute as we start the sermon. But I know everybody does not I know it's a really a sad time for a lot of people, especially the people sick and, and death and, and heartache and in the hospital and depression and all that. But uh, we need to pray for each other and lift each other up. Amen? Amen. And do the best we can. Major, you ready Ready to pray? Major, you're coming up again. You got, man, you got the mic with you. Amen. Am I on, on the microphone? Am I on? Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Great to see everybody out. So nice to uh, have uh, uh, Shana's uh, dad and stepmom with us. So nice to meet you guys and have you all with us. And uh, so good to see Barbara out. Uh, just uh, great to see everybody out this evening. I want to thank everybody for their prayers uh, for me for my surgery tomorrow. We just uh, we just love all y'all. Just really appreciate uh, appreciate everyone. So thanks for being out. Thanks for all of our brothers and sisters that are watching online. Uh, we just love and appreciate our folks. Uh, looking forward to a uh, great service tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight with thankful hearts, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your house here on a Wednesday night, Lord. It's just uh, such a blessing, Father, uh, that for our church, Lord, and it's such a blessing that we uh, can come out on a Wednesday night, Lord, and get fed with, uh, with your precious word of God, Father. And pray that you'd bless this time, Lord. I ask that you'd uh, thank you for, for blessing the singing, Lord, that, that we've heard already. Uh, for Miss Jean, Lord, and uh, thank you for her, Lord, and thank you for uh, <clears throat> for Dad. I ask that you would uh, anoint him and fill him with the Holy Ghost, Father, as he uh, prepares uh, to give the message that you put on his heart, Lord, and help us to open up our hearts and minds and put away any distractions, Father, and help us not to, to get distracted this Christmas, Lord, and help us not to have a Martha Christmas, Lord, but help us to, to focus on you, Lord, and want to stay at your feet and help us to have a Merry Christmas, Lord. And, uh, Lord, we're just uh, thankful for everybody here tonight, Lord. Thank you for uh, everybody that's making this happen. Thank you for our folks back in the sound booth, Lord, and uh, security and just... Uh, 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 people come in and turn on the lights, Lord, everybody, Father, just uh, made this service possible, Lord, and everybody that's taken the time and the energy to come out, and everybody that's taken the time on uh, Facebook Live to join us, Lord, we just uh, love our people, Lord, and we're just so thankful for them, Lord, you just blessed us beyond measure, Father, and, and as we go through this Christmas season, Lord, help us to, to continue to focus on you, Father, help us to remember that you are the reason for the season, Lord, that we can't have, we can't have Christmas without Christ, Lord, just like my, my shirt says, Lord, it's just, it's, it's, it's all about Christ, Father, is what Christmas is, Lord, it's not just a, it's not just a holiday, it, it, it is a national holiday we celebrate, but it is a holy day, Father, and that's, and that's, that's what matters, that's, that's what makes it so different, Father, than any other just regular holiday, Lord, it's all about you, and Lord, we praise you and thank you, Lord, I want to pray for the prayer list, Father, all those names that were mentioned, uh, any that weren't mentioned, any, uh, anybody that has any unspoken requests, Lord, I ask you to reach down and touch their needs, Father, if it be your will. Pray that you would uh, heal them, dear Lord, and uh, most importantly, they don't know you. Pray that they'd come to know you before it's everlasting too late. Lord, and pray for the service tonight. Pray, Lord, pray for your Holy Spirit to come down. Lord, if anybody here tonight that doesn't know you as the Lord and Savior of their life, pray that tonight would be the night that they say, that say yes to Jesus before it's everlasting too late, whether they be in the building or whether they be watching online. Lord, you know their hearts. I ask that you'd reach down and touch them, Lord. And we just praise you and we thank you and just love you, Father, for all the goodness and the mercy that you put upon us, dear Lord. Just such, just just too good to us, Father, and we can never thank you enough. Lord, nonetheless, we ask not our will, but that your will be done. In the holy, sweet, precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. That's not bad for a Wednesday night, is it? We'll take that. Uh, again, welcome out tonight, and we appreciate, again, Shana's dad and stepmom being here. I just let you know in front of them, we just absolutely love it. Justin and Shana, yeah. and what a blessing they've been been to us and to our church. And uh, what'd she say? 
Right, has to be the truth. I read it on Google. <laughs> I read it on Google. You know, Google won't mess you up, right? <laughs> well, now I want to talk to you about a, about a subject I always love to preach on around Christmas time, and I, I love it. I was working on it today, and, 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 and st st still was working on it a little bit there when we were getting ready to come to church. But uh, I don't know if you've, uh, you've heard this or not. I'll just, uh, maybe you can raise your hand or not, I don't know, but you, you heard that they're not going to be able to have the manger scene in Washington, D.C. this year, right? You heard that? Yeah. After, they can't find any wise men, and no virgins are around up there. So <laughs> It's a joke, by the way. It's a joke. Truth, though. It could be a truthful joke. You can't find any wise men up there. So, uh, and that's a joke. Don't let that get you all worked up there. If that, if that bothers you, you're going to be in for a world of hurt here in a little bit. But uh, anyhow, we'll preach on a subject here I'll tell you about in a minute. But I wanted to talk to you about a couple of things about Christmas. You know, when we talk about Christmas, is about Christ. Amen. Major's got his shirt on tonight. Can you stand up, Major, and let everybody look at that? He's got the parentheses there, Christ must. So Christmas is about Christ. There's no way you can have Christmas without Christ, although there are a lot of people that do, and uh, they, they, don't, they don't have the biblical concept of it. But, you know, there were over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament about Jesus Christ. And, you know, he fulfilled many of those on his first coming. Now, he's still there will be some that still will be fulfilled as he gets into his second coming, but he fulfilled many of them, and when you think about that, there was a guy years ago by the name of Peter Stoner, and he, he, he did some mathematical figuring up, and, and, and he calculated the odds of one person. I remember what I said. There were 300, 300 some. Some people say 400 some prophecies in the Old Testament about Jesus. He said if one person could fulfill just eight of those, just eight, pick you out eight, and one person could fulfill them, that the odds of, of, of one person being able to do that would be one with seven, one in 17 zeros behind it. One in, okay, can you imagine that? One, I mean, not, that's not one in 100 or one in 1,000 or one in 10,000. That's one in with a one in 17 zeros behind it. You say, how, oh, how, how much is that? Well, he also figured this up. I don't know how much it is. It's a bunch. But uh, that's, that's, that's 1 in, in 10 to the 17th power for you mathematicians. That's 1 in 10 to the 17th power. And that 17th power means there's 17 zeros backing that up. Uh, bigger than the national debt. Yeah, bigger than the national debt. And that's pretty big. So Jesus fulfilled, think about that. And they missed him. Peter Stoner also said he gave this. He gave this illustration. He said, I wish Shane was here. Shane, if you're listening. By the way, Shane was on with us the other day on Sunday. And uh, he, he said, Shane said, you know what he said? Shane said, finding a church is harder than what I thought it would be. And I said, well, you know, finding, you know, it, it is hard. Finding a church is not hard. Finding a good one is extremely hard. And, uh, but this guy, Peter Stoner, said, if you took the state of Texas, that's a pretty big area. Would you can we agree with that? If you know anything about geography, your map, U.S. map, pretty big, pretty big piece of real estate right there. And as if you said, if you took Texas and put 50 cent pieces and stacked them two foot high all over Texas and marked one of them and blindfolded somebody and let him loose and let him walk in there and pick out that one marked 50 cent piece, that would be the probability of the one in 17th to the 17th power. I don't know how people cannot believe in Jesus Christ. Right. When you back it up with the Bible, I, you know, I just don't know how you, can, how you cannot believe that because Jesus' birth was promised, prophesied, predicted in the New Test Old Testament, and it came to pass in the new. Amen? Amen. He changed the world. And, you know, no wonder they're talking about Christmas, the most wonderful time. To me, it is. Amen. I mean, I, I love it. I, I love that. Again, I know a lot of people don't feel like that. If you do, again, as I say, don't tell me, don't rain on my parade. Amen? Amen. I'm not sure you can have too much Christmas. Amen. 
I look around the church. I'm just not sure you can have too much Christmas. I mean, I like, the, I like everything about it. And uh, when you think about that, I had a pastor friend years ago, and, and he didn't believe in putting Christmas trees in the church. I said, that's, that's a, we're not going to fall out over that. If you don't want to do that, that's your prerogative. Don't do it. We're going to do it. Uh, we're going to do it, and we're going to celebrate, and we're going to put lights up and all that stuff. Now, if you don't want to do it, that's fine. You don't want to decorate. You don't want to get involved in any of the Christmas traditions. That's fine. But we've all probably got some traditions that we, that we do at Christmas time, and they're not all bad. I, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to say this tonight as the pastor. I don't think there's anything wrong with celebrating Christmas. When you know what Christmas is all about, and it's about Christ, and you can put Him first and focus on Him, then, then I, don't think, I don't think the tree and the lights, and I don't think all that stuff's going to ruin you. Amen. Now, if that's going to ruin you, you're already, you're already ruined. Right. I grew up believing in all that. Amen. Most of you probably grew up believing in all that, and if you're ruined, maybe it ruined you. But it didn't ruin me. Amen. And it won't ruin you if you're a Christian and you've got the proper biblical perspective about Christ, Christmas. Amen? So if you disagree with, uh, put, you say, I don't want to put up a tree, well, that's fine. You want to put up lights, that's fine. We're not going to fall out over that. But those traditions, you know, well, I, I'm, I'm going to rant for just a minute and try not to rant much because I really want to preach on this sermon. I'm just about sick and tired of the liberals and the modernists and the woke movement and, and, and the political correct crowd taking everything godly and using it for evil. Amen. I mean, think about the alphabet people. They, they've stolen the rainbow. Well, I'm just going to tell you, listen, I know, you know, people say, well, you know, well, the, 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 the Christmas was a pagan holiday. Christmas was about Christ. Amen. Now, there might be some paganism that's been in that back down through the years, but I'm going to tell you what, we need to take everything we can and pull it back into Christianity. Amen. Amen. And we need to let the world know, man, listen, we're not going to take a back seat. We're not going to shut up. We're not going to sit down. We're going to still say Merry Christmas. Amen. We're going to still say that Christmas is about Christ, and we're going to celebrate the way we ought to celebrate. Amen. Amen. I say we keep our Christmas traditions Christ Christian. What do you say? Amen. You, I don't know if you know this, and let me share a couple things with you. You know, you can thank the Germans for some of our Christmas Christian traditions. Now, I've heard people say that, you know, a Christmas tree, you're not supposed to have a Christmas tree in your house. It's a symbol of, of paganism. Well, listen, it was the Christians in Germany in the 16th century that first brought the Christmas tree in the house. And you know why they brought the Christmas tree in the house? Because the Christmas tree is an evergreen. And an evergreen is symbolic of eternal life. And they brought that in as a reminder to remember that, hey, as a Christian, we have eternal life. Amen? Amen. And then I don't know if you know this or not, you know the name Martin Luther. Martin Luther is the guy who started the Protestant Reformation back there on October 31st, years ago, back in the 1600s. Martin Luther was the first person who put lights on a Christmas tree. Now, he didn't put electric lights. They didn't have them. He put candles on a tree. And he did. you say, why did he do that? Because it reminded him that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Amen? And, man, you know, you, you just think about those things. I'm just sick and tired of, of, of this liberal, modern, wicked, antichrist mindset that wants to take Listen, they don't believe the Bible, but they want to tear everything out of it and make it pagan. I say let's take it back to Jesus. Amen? Do you even know that? I wish I had me a candy cane tonight. You know that candy cane started with the Germans back in the 1600s? You know that when the Germans first made them, they were all white? They were made all white, symbolizing the purity of Jesus Christ. And then they made them in the shape of a shepherd's staff because Jesus is the great shepherd. Amen. And then as they migrated into America in the 1800s, 1900s, they began to come in. Then they began to put the red stripe on the candy cane as, as to remind them of what? of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we can see that many of our cr traditions that people say, well, you know, uh, everything about Christmas is paid. No, there, no, it's not. Amen. Now, you can, you can take anything and make it bad. Right. But I say, let's take some of that stuff and make it good. Amen. Amen. 
we give gifts. We put gifts under the tree because God was a, was a great giver. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. The wise men, when they came, presented. Do you hear the podcast today? Was it today? Yeah. Podcast on the wise men. Thank you, Major. The, you know, the gifts, and we'll be talking about those gifts here too. But, you know, hey, they brought gifts. Giving gifts. We give gifts because Jesus gave his own self to us as a gift. Amen. Amen. So, you know, all those things, I just say fooey on people that's so, so strict and, and so, so legalistic and so uh, everything's paganism and everything's got to, no, I'm going to say let's bring it out and just celebrate it for Jesus. Amen. Amen. We got these wreaths up there. They're, they're, they're artificial like a lot of people, but they, they, they're, they look like evergreens. That's eternal life. Amen. 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 We got a wooden tree back there in the, in the, in the foyer way. Ain't much I can say about that, I don't guess. Got a lot of people like that too, too stiff and rigid, I guess. But uh, anyhow, here we go. I'm gonna pray. Here's my sermon night. You ready? I got to hurry up. Got to hustle up. I'm gonna preach on. I love this thought. Christmas tree Christians. Christmas tree Christian. I probably preached that years ago when my buddy and I got into it and, and got to talking about. It. He didn't believe we ought to put a Christmas tree in the in the church. Well, I just began to preach on why we should and, and you know, how Christians like that, you know. And I, I just, I just believe that we ought to, ought to be able to celebrate Christmas and his birth. And, and uh, I, again, I think if you've got a proper view, a biblical view of Christmas, none, this stuff's not going to hurt you. Amen. I see Rudolph, hey, I see Santa and Rudolph. And, so, and by the way, Santa came by my house last night. I mean, man, well, I, heard the, I heard the sirens and, and, the, and the whistles going off. And I told Kathy, I said, hey. I believe that's Santa Claus. And we went out and stood, and lo and behold, it sure was. Santa Claus came right by my house last night. You guys guess what? That didn't ruin me. Hey, if Rudolph would have flown in with him, I would that wouldn't have ruined me. Now, if Frosty come rolling down the middle of the street, that might have that might have concerned me here in Florida. Now, if he's made out of sand, that wouldn't bother me. But man, we let the what did our Michigan folks take care of the snow up yonder in the north country, amen. But you know, all those things, man, that that that, that doesn't ruin me and cause me to backslide and to lose my soul. Amen. Because I know what Jesus is all about. Amen. amen. So if you know Jesus is the reason for the season, you'll be all right. I believe there's some lessons we can learn tonight from the Christmas tree. And uh, I want to talk about that. Number one, let me start talk about different kinds of Christmas trees. You know, there are different kinds of, can I get an amen on that? Amen. There are different kinds of Christmas trees, just as there are different kinds of Christians. If you believe all Christians are the same, you've got a lot to learn. I'm going to go one step further. If you believe everybody, when they get to heaven, is going to get the same reward, then you've got a lot to learn. There are different degrees of rewards in heaven based on your service for Jesus here on earth. And so you say, well, I believe they're all the same. No, some Christians are carnal, some are worldly, some are growing, some are mature, some are immature, some are backsliding, some have great faith, some have no faith, some have little faith, some have misplaced faith. There are a lot of different kinds of Christians. And if you haven't learned that yet, all you got to do is look around the church. You realize everybody's not at the same level. You were growing, amen, we ought to be growing in the right direction. But when I think about that, there are different kinds of Christmas, Christmas trees too. Number one, let me say there's a real Christmas tree. You don't see very many of them anymore. We're inundated with the artificial tree. It's convenient. Real trees are almost a thing of the past a lot of times because they, you know, they, you know, they, you got to take care of them, you got to water them, you got to get sweep the needles up, you, gotta, you know, they're a fire hazard. I mean, you got all those things. So the real tree today is almost, almost unseen a lot of times. Same way with a Christian. Real Christians are hard to find. Now you got a lot of folks. Now let's don't let this bother you. You got a lot of folks who talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. You got a lot of folks who say I'm a Christian, really no more than a lost church member. They've really never been saved. They've ne they don't know Jesus. They're just pretending to be something that they ain't. Real Christians, I'm going to tell you what, real Bible, born again, blood bought Christianity is almost a thing of the past today. All you got to do is listen to the news, watch the news, and man, we, the liberals and the moderns and man, all this, these mega churches and all this stuff out there, man, the, this contemporary. Christian music has just inundated the church, and just, it's just almost destroyed old-time biblical historical 
Christianity. So I'm going to say there is a real live Christmas tree. Amen? Amen. How many people have a real live Christmas tree? Well, I really don't believe you do, but hold on a minute. Number two, then there's an, artif then there's an artificial tree. I knew I'd get somebody here in a minute to get, get in the sermon. Then you've got artificial trees. Now, th listen, you know, you, you, we got a little artificial tree. It's convenient. It looks good. In fact, you, you know, when you think about that artificial tree, there's nothing, nothing real about them. They're, they're, they're a hypocrite tree. They're, they're pretending to be an evergreen tree, but they're not. In fact, there have been some artificial trees I've walked up and grabbed a hold of because they look like they're the real deal, but they're not. They look real, but they're not real. And I thought about that. You know what's the difference between an artificial tree and a real tree? It's what's on the inside of it. Now, wait a minute. An artificial tree might look better than a real tree. You can make, you say, why not, what do you say, you, listen, my buddy Mike Honecker, the undertaker, the undertakers can take dead people and make them look good. But I wouldn't want to be in the, in the box laying there looking back at you. So when you think about artificial trees, you know, they could, they could look better than, a, they could look better than a real tree. Real trees out there, and it stood the wind, it stood the storm, it stood the snow on it, it stood the heat on it through the summer. I mean, man, listen, they might have a branch broken off, they may have some needles off of it, but they're the real deal. Amen. Be careful about everything that looks good. Everything that glistens is not gold. Amen. And you know, you like I said, you make a dead person look good. And I, I thought about that. It, the difference between an artificial tree and a real tree is on the inside of a real tree, they got it's got sap in it. It's connected. Not only has it got sap, it's coming up from the root system that's connected to something that's giving it life, living force. Artificial tree doesn't have that. You don't have to stick water in the bowl with it. How many people just put aspirins in the real tree in your, in, your, in your thing or something to try to keep that thing alive? Do, you do everything in the world to try to keep it alive. Well, when, when you think about that, man, listen, they, the artificial trees don't have anything. They're not connected to the life source. Artificial Christians and unsaved people, they may look good. They may even look better than us at times. But they don't have anything on the inside of them. You and I have the Holy Spirit of God living in us. Man, we got the life-giving force of Almighty God. Even man, we are connected to God Almighty. Amen. I mean, think about that. Then you got the aluminum trees. I hated those things. I hope you didn't have one. I hated. I hated those from the time. I, you know, what I'm talking about those silver ones. Anybody got one? Oh no, a couple of you got one. Oh God. Yeah, yeah the silver and old aluminum look like it looked like aluminum force thrown up all over something. And got the little spent pinwheel there with the colors that go around. We got some people. God bless y'all. I love you anyhow. But, but man, I don't know why you'd want one of those. They're just, they're, 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 there's no substance to those. That's not a real tree either. And then you got, then you got dead trees. Now, how many people said they had a, had a, had a, a, a live tree? They ain't going to raise their They ain't going to raise You don't have a live tree. You got a dead tree. Because it's been cut off, unless you got the root ball in the house. You got the root ball in the house? You don't have a live tree. You got a tree that's been cut off that is die in the process of dying. It is going to die. Give it a week or two, and it'll be deader than it'll be as brown as it can be, and the needles will fall off of them, and it'll look like Charlie Brown's tree. Everybody said, Boy, we're going to go ahead and get a live tree. And I'll say, You ain't getting no live tree. You're getting a tree that's been cut down. It's just, it's just like you. You just ain't died yet. You on your way to dying. Isn't that good news? Our friends came from Michigan to hear that. You on your way to dying. You just ain't dead yet. And that's the way those tree people, everybody says, man, I got a live tree. You ain't got no live tree. Live tree ain't going to die like that. It's going to be connected to the life source. Amen. So just hang on, baby. Tell me in about two weeks if it's still alive. And I'll say, no, nah, I ain't still alive. How is a Christian, though, like a, like a real Christmas tree? I'm going to give you four things and we're going to go to the house. Number one, they're grounded. They're grounded. A real evergreen tree is grounded. 
It's grounded in the ground. It's grounded with the dirt. It's surrounded and it can withstand the storms. The Bible says in Psalms 1, verse number 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor setteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I want to tell you, if you planted deep, if you're a real Christian, you're grounded in your faith, you're grounded grounded in the Word of God, you're grounded in Jesus, and everything that comes by is not going to shake you and knock you down. Amen. we got a lot of church members, every time something happens, see the news, they just go to pieces, start just wringing their hands, oh God, what are we going to do? My faith is not in that. My faith in this right here. My faith is, faith is in the one who wrote this book, God Almighty, amen. And I want to tell you what, if you want to be like a real tree, you need to be grounded. Amen. Ephesians 4.14 says that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You know what's wrong with a lot of people, church members? Let me step it back one. Even young Christians, they get saved, or they say they get saved, and they never get grounded in the Word of God. They never, they, they never get grounded in the fundamental doctrines of the Bible. It's all sensationalism. It's all emotionalism. There's no, I'm going to tell you what. Listen, if, 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 if that's all you've got, and I, and I love emotionalism. I love, listen, I love that, but I want it to be spirit-led and spirit-driven. And if that's all you've got is emotionalism and commotion, it won't take anything but a commotion to tear you up. And man, that's what's wrong with people. People say they got saved and somebody comes by, Benny Hinn. Who in the world could follow Benny Hinn? But yet, with it, he got millions of followers. He got more followers than what I got. Remember what I said, the artificial tree sometimes can look better than the real thing. Who in the world could follow Benny Hinn? Well, I hope they're not Benny Hinn followers back there. Wow, new folks coming out here. If you are, God bless you. We'll try to get you by it. But hey, you know, anybody that goes around acting like they can blow the Holy Ghost on people and take his jacket and blow people down, knock people down, and, and all that stuff, all that healing stuff and all that stuff, that's a, it's fakery. It's mockery. It's a disgrace to the Word of God. But yet we got, we got people who call themselves Christians. We got these mega churches. That they, 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 they never heard their preacher preach on salvation. They never heard their preacher tell anybody in the congregation how to be saved. They've never seen anybody do that. They've never heard their preacher preach on hell or judgment or, or temptation or purity or holiness or right living or separation or the judgment to come. They've never heard any of that. They said, oh, we got such a great church. You don't have, you don't have, if Todd was here, Todd would say, you ain't got no church. Remember Sunday morning? I'm still excited about that. My buddy, he lean over, big old guy, big as a, big as a bear, but I could lean over, that, lean over that sound bush like that. And I'm just preaching. He said, yeah, it wasn't no church. I said, what? He said, wasn't no church. He's right, there wasn't no church. It's social clubs, Amen. So not very many Christians today, is, today are rooted and grounded in the Word of God. I mean, here my, here, it, I, it's early yet. We've got a few more days to the 2024. Here's my challenge to you. You want to be a good Christian, get grounded in the Word of God. Amen. Man, we're teaching lessons on Tuesday morning truths that you could pick up. If you can't be here, you could pick it up on Facebook. You could pick up on YouTube. That's teaching you about how to live the Christian life. That's teaching you about the fundamental doctrine. You know, you say, well, I, lo I love Jesus. Listen, if you're not grounded enough to be a giving Christian, you don't, don't tell me how much you love Jesus. Amen? Amen. If, you, if, you're, if you call yourself a Christian and, and, and you're not reading, if you're not a reading Christian, don't tell me how much you love Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you say, I'm a Christian and you're not witnessing to anybody and you're not sharing your faith, don't tell me how much you love Jesus. Because a real Christian is going to get founded in the Word of God and going to be a reading, giving, witnessing Christian the way the Bible said. Amen? Amen. Now, there are a lot of flip-flop Christians out there. And Florida is bad for flip-flops. I mean, it's the flip-flop capital of the United States probably. And churches are just as bad. 
Got people just flip in and flip out and just flop around like a fish out of water, man. I'm telling you what, hey, listen, artificial trees, you ever had the cat turn your tree over? Huh? They'd jump, they'd take a run, just jump, just ride that thing down, jerk stuff off of it, dog run into it, knock it over. Take them out here in the yard somewhere, let them run into a real tree that's grounded. It'll knock some sense into their head. Amen. They won't run into it very many times. So I'm just going to tell you, dig deep, get settled, get grounded in God's Word, in His law. Get grounded in God's love. And get grounded in your looking. The Bible says, man, looking for that blessed hope. I'm looking for Jesus to come back. Amen. 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 Number, two, number two, they're not only grounded. Number two, they're green. I'm not talking about puke green. You ever look at somebody and they're about to throw up and they're just about, about some pale shade, about like the pale horse of Revelation. Man, listen, I'm not I'm talking about green, green, gr evergreen, green. Real Christians are green, man. You know why? Because it's a symbol of eternal life. Listen, one of these days, as D.L. Moody said, one of these days you'll read that D.L. Moody's died. Don't believe it. I remember, I've just changed addresses. Listen, we, we, we ought to be green, green with the eternalness of God Almighty. When we got saved, we're going to live forever with God. Amen. Amen. They may look different, but, man, they're green. Amen. Green's a sign of life. By the way, when you look at a lot of Christians, you, you, they don't look green. Look almost a brown, dusty brown. Puke green, man, because they're just dry and dead. You know, there are a lot of dead, dry Christians out there. I, I, you know, I don't know. For the last several days, I've been reading the Christmas story. Every, every, as, as I do my Bible, I'm, I go to Matthew, and I read Matthew chapter 1, the end of verse, chapter 1. And I read Matthew beginning down chapter chapter 2 and read the Christmas story. I flip over the book of Luke. I re read down through the, all the way down through the shepherds, sometime down into Simeon. Every day, I just read that every day, every day. Are you doing that? Have you read that yet? you got, you got 12 days left. You ought to read that every. You say, well, I read it once 20 years ago. Well, heck, fire. Well, so what? Man, you ought to read it every day and let the, let the true meaning of Christmas, man, stir you up. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Peter 3.18, but grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. These people here said they got those live Christmas trees. They ain't going to grow another inch taller. Am I Right? They've lost their growth inhibitor. They have nothing in them to cause them to grow. In fact, they begin to shrink, really, when they begin to dry up and just shrivel away. Man, listen, you don't want to talk about us doing that. But we need to grow. Christians need to grow. We need to, we need to be like that evergreen tree, man. We need to be, listen, you, you, listen you're either growing or you're dying. You say, no, I've just found a comfortable place. No, you, you've been deceived. There is no comfortable place. You're either in the battle, pushing back the darkness, or the darkness is pushing you back. You're either going forward and you're living and you're breathing and you're growing in the Lord, or you're backsliding. And i got to tell you, I believe there are a lot of church members that have backslid on the Lord. Amen. First John 5, 11 says, This is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. Man, we, we studied that in our, in our discipleship lesson. Remember, Eddie, week after week after week, all those verses that we looked at that God promised, that Jesus promised when he saves you, he doesn't give you probationary life. He doesn't give you temporary life. He doesn't write your name down with a, with a pencil that can be erased out of the book of life. If you truly got saved, you got saved forever. Amen. So you need to be green, man. You need to be green in your life. Be growing, Amen. Be a growing Christian. Man, there's nothing that excites the church or the pastor or other people than somebody that's growing in their faith. Amen. Hey, pastor, I read this in the Bible the other day. Man, help me with this. Explain this to me. Tell me what this is. Is this what this, that's exciting? That somebody's texted me just this week and asked me a Bible question, and I, I sent it back, and I gave them the best answer I got. I said, did I miss something? They said, no, that's what I thought it was. I love that. Be growing in your Christian life. Amen. Be green in your life. Then be green in your living. Amen. Man, live like you're alive. You know, you look a lot of Christians look like they've been pickled in vinegar. I mean, they, they, you know, they're, 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 I told you, I, you know, I, I got to think. I don't know why I tell everything I tell when I'm preaching. 
I've always been that way. So don't think you're going to get me out. Don't think you or your negativity will get me out of it. It's been a long-term thing, 45 years. So your sarcasm and negativity won't have any effect on that whatsoever. I just happen to tell everything on myself. I got thinking, why did I tell that story about being in that store the other day and spent 45 minutes standing there trying to wait to get a refund? I thought, what bearing? I don't even know if I had him buried on the sermon. But I tell stuff like that to let people know I'm human just like you. Amen. People think the pastor's, he's off limits, and nobody, nobody touches him. He doesn't, he doesn't have any temptations. He doesn't ever lose his cool. I told you Sunday night, if I was like the two witnesses in Revelation 11, some of you wouldn't be here. I would blow, blow fire out of my mouth, and you'd already been disintegrated. You'd already been gone. You'd been in a little box. Say, here, here's the remains of your loved one. I'm human like ever. Give me a break. Preachers aren't way up here. Amen. So we got to be green in our living, man. Be green and live for Jesus. Amen. And be green in your lasting. I don't plan on dying. Now, I might lay down on this side, but I plan on living on the other side because I'm, I'm going to live forever. Jesus said, He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. You believe this? He said, You believe it? Believest thou this? I believe it. Amen. I believe it. Then, number three, I got to hurry up. Number three, they're not, only, they're not only green and they're not only grounded. Number three, they glow. They got lights on them. I, to me, I like trees with lights on them. I come in tonight, one of the little trees out front wasn't on. I just, I got, I got a feeling that the sensor wasn't working because we had all the porch lights on. I said, well, I'll fix that. I just turned on, 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 on. Mind me, turn that off. Back on the sensor when we leave. Man, I like glowing lights on the tree. Amen? I mean, let's, let's, you know why? And you know, think about the tree, how the tree's like a Christian. The tree doesn't have any lights in of itself. Somebody has to put the light on them. You and I don't have any light in us until Jesus comes into us and he makes us. He said, I'm the light of the world. Now you go out, you, you let your little light shine. He put a light in us and we ought to let it shine. Amen. Amen. Jesus has lit you up, man. You ought to be shining for Jesus. Amen. Go down here at Walmart. Go down, there this, go down there Saturday and see how many people shining for Jesus. Man, you'll get run over. You'll get your buggy hit. You might get your car run into with a buggy. It might be somebody run into you with their car. You, you get in somebody's parking spot, you'll get all kind of fingers pointed at you. There'll be people cussing, ranting, and raving going up through there. I mean, I, I mean, hey, just think about that. And people, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian and giving people the finger as they go. Wow. Wow. If we're saved, we'll be letting our light shine. I told you. If I had my way, when I stood at that store the other day for 45 minutes, I would, have, I would have pitched myself a fit. But I couldn't because I'm a Christian. And sometimes you can't do what you want to do as a Christian. And for all you people say, well, that's just the way I am. Well, just get over it and get better. Because I'm a lot like that too. And you gotta, you gotta, the Holy Spirit allows you to control that. We're not all loose cannon. But you, you think you're the only loose cannon in the world? We, we could all be a loose cannon. But you've got to be controlled and tempered by the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. So we need to glow, man. We need to let our light shine. I went, I went by the day, Bill Maher went by Bill and Shirley's other day, and Bill Maher threw me into a flashback. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Bless his heart. 84, 85 years old, Bill is. He'd put his lights up on the, on the fence out there, his Christmas lights. This side was burning, and this side was burning. The middle wasn't. And guess what he was doing? You remember what he's doing. Some of the older people, he was flicking on those lights, twisting those big old bulbs, flicking those lights, going up and down that fence row, flicking those lights. That's one of the memories of Christmas. I had my, to get those lights out to put them on the tree, and they're all, why do they get tied up in a box? They come out like fishing line, tied, tied up, tangled up like, like there's an elf down in there that ties them up. You get them out and get about that much off the string and you just work for an hour. And then my dad used to be, you know, now I love the lights now. One goes out, they all keep burning. That's the way church ought to be. Amen. You say, well, I'm going to burn out. I'm just going to unplug myself and go home. Well, we ought to just keep right on burning anyhow. 
If, if one bulb going out is going to shut the church down, we might as well just shut her down tonight. Amen. 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 Bill out there, just for my daddy would be down on his hands and knees flicking on those bulbs, man, shaking them. I don't know what that did, but I, I grew up to doing too. Take them out and flick those things. They hurt you. They, they won't burn. Man, listen, we need to glow, man. We don't, we don't need to be a light that's out. We've got the light in us, man. We, we're the light of the world. Jesus has lighted us up. When we got saved, man, there ought to be, there ought to be a glow about you. You say, I didn't have anything to be happy about before I got saved, but now you do. You're saved. Your sins have been forgiven. You're on your way to heaven. you got a home forever. You ought to be happy. Get that sire look off your face. Amen. world's dark. I just saw, just I didn't get a chance to read it all day, but I saw where Hamas, that put a warning out to all America. Well, you know how much that bothers I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay awake tonight and, and, and not get a bit of sleep worrying about that. No. Now I'm going to go home, get in the bed, and go to sleep and not worry about it. Because I serve Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All that stuff. You hear all this stuff on the news. You turn the news on, the news on, that's all you read. Negative, 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 negative. There's no wonder we're negative. Not only should we have the, we got the light in us, we ought to be lighting the way for others. Amen. It's a dark world out there. Yes, People need to find their way to Jesus. They need to find their way home. Amen. You and I have the responsibility of shining the light of the gospel to them so that they can be saved. Amen. Amen. Not only that, we ought to be linked together. I like when you buy those, those little mini lights, you know, the little teeny, teeny ones. Well, they, one goes out to the Auburn and said, you can link 25, 30, 35, 40 sets together. And they just, just man, I like that. Just keep plugging them in. We need to be linked together. Amen. We're to work together. We're to labor together. We're not supposed to be independent. Out there just doing our own thing. And not, we, we, you, know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm just an island by my own. Listen, the church is not supposed to be like that. Nope. We're supposed to be linked up together. We're supposed, to, we're supposed to just keep an out. If you want to you burn out and go home and get mad, take your stuff and go on. But we ought to just keep the light on, amen? amen. Somebody come by and say, why, why is that light out? Say, they got mad and left. I'll just put your name on it. Say, there it is. Man, we need to just keep right on going, man. We need, and, and I'm going to tell you what, lights won't do any good if you're not plugged into the power source. Amen. You can have all the light. You can have all, look how pretty my lights are. Well, they're not on. Remember old Clark Griswold? Like said, that's a classic to us. We haven't watched it yet. Y'all watched it yet, maybe? We need to watch that. Hey, you put all those 10 billion lights on his house. Drum roll. <laughs> Nothing. Because you're not plugged into the power. You know, there are a lot of people out here trying to, trying to be a light. And they're not even plugged into the power. Right. You can't be a light if you're not plugged into Jesus. Right. You say, well, I'm going to try and be a witness. For you can't be a witness for Jesus if you're not saved. Right. I said this the other day, and I'm going to say it again for your singers here so they'll know how I feel. You ain't living right. Don't you get up here and sing where I'm the pastor. Well, it got quiet right there, didn't it? I'm just telling you the God's on it. If I find out about it, I'll come and tell you to get down. And you won't be the first one I've ever told that, so don't think it'll be my first rodeo. People want to get up and sing and, and teach and, and have an active role in the church, and they what got quiet all of a sudden. Well, let me step back a minute. I must have hit a bad nerve right there. Don't you get up and try to do something for Jesus if you're not plugged into the power source. Amen. We don't need your singing that bad. There ain't nobody here can sing that good. We don't need your singing that good. Amen? Amen. We don't need your preaching if you're not going to be saved. Right. We don't need you to get up and try to teach the kids back there if you're not saved. Right. Well, they're only kids, yeah, but they're growing up. Right. I told you where I come from. I come from the country, man. I come from the hollers. You've been there. And, man, when I started preaching, they let, they let anybody in the, in the community get up and sing in church. Everybody knew they were the, they're, just, they're, they're lost as a goose in a hailstorm. Well, we ain't got nobody to sing. Come on up and sing one night. Get up and get that guitar and start just singing away. I said, hold it. There'll be no more singing in the church where I'm the pastor if you're not saved. Amen. You can imagine how that went over. First church I pastored, they had a nice choir, had a nice choir in there. 
me, Mom. I'm saying that this will help you down the road, by the way. Might not help you tonight, but it'll help you down the road. And that way I won't have to get involved in it. Hey, first church I've had had a nice choir. Had this guy up there just singing away, just singing away. Oh, he came to church to see. He loved singing. Unsaved people love gospel music. He come and got right in the choir. I got there as a pastor, and I'm 20-some years old. He's probably 50, 60 years old. He's an old-timer. They said, you know, he's not even saved. I said, do what? I said, hey, you ain't going to sing here. You said, how'd it go over? Not very good. But we maintain the integrity of the church. Amen. Had a guy one time, and, you know, he was in and out of church about, about like, you know, just in the day and out tomorrow and in the day and out tomorrow and in the day and out tomorrow. Drug addict. I found out, man, he's, he's still taking drugs and up there playing the guitar and singing. I just went to him. I said, let me talk to you for just a minute. That's what bothers when I pull people in that room back there and say, let me talk to you a minute. You don't ever know if it's going to be good or bad. You don't know what I found out about you. And I pulled him off the side. Let me tell you something. I said, man, listen, you're not going to be playing that guitar and singing here in church. Oh, he got mad. He said, what do you think this is, a ball club? I said, no, it's the Lord's club. It's the Lord's team. You ain't going to live right, you ain't going to sing. You ain't going to live right, you ain't going to preach. You ain't going to live right, you ain't going to work in that nursery back there. You ain't going to live right, you ain't going to work in that children's church back there. You say, what will you do about it? I'll bring them all out and set them right here and let them scream and yell and cry and fuss and pee and poop all over themselves and preach over top of them Amen. before I let somebody unsaved work with those kids. Amen. I'm just telling you the truth, amen. You say, I didn't know you were that hard. Well, you're finding that now. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna let your light shine. You better be plugged into Jesus, amen. And don't just drape you over a tree, man, not plug you in. You want to serve the Lord, get saved and get right with the Lord, amen. Amen. Boy, I hit a nerve on that. I, I'm gonna, I better stay on that for a while. Number four, and we'll go to the house. How? What'd you say? I am preaching. That's good preaching. I don't know if it's good preaching, but it's truthful preaching. Amen. How's, how's Christian like a Christmas tree, real tree? Not only, not only grounded, they're not only, now what did I say? Not only, not, not only glow, and they not only, they're not only, what was the other part? Grounded? Green? Number four, they have garnishings on them. You know what garnishings are? This stuff, you know, this stuff right here. Little bulbs. You like that, those little bulbs? I told us, anybody still put those little silver icicles on, on, on the Christmas? You do that. Are you serious? Oh, you used to. I was, she said, not now. You know what I'm talking about? Those little icicles, you buy them in a box, 10,000, 10, like 10,000 like 10, in a box. What's it called? Oh, we call them icicles in the country up there. Listen, if I had to Google it up to get the answer, I'll Google it. My dad loved those. Can you remember those? My dad would get those. He'd take them out of that box and drape them over his hands. And, and one at a time. And for hours, one at a time. And I'd say, let me help you. And he can remember, I just... I say, look, I can do it. I just throw them up there in the gob, man. They just look like a bird's nest. And he'd be going around. I think through the whole Christmas season, he'd be going around taking those one at a time. We don't put those on the trees, by the way, anymore. I don't have that kind. Huh? I don't have that kind of patience. Amen? Uh, fool with that. But th th those, are, those are garnishings. And when you, when you think about that, Christians ought to be, they, you know what? We ought to have some garnishings about us. The Bible says in Hebrews 6, chapter number 9, that he said, he said, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation. There's some things that accompany salvation. Amen. Just like a tree got some things that accompany that tree. It's got some bulbs and some garnishes, some icicles and some bows and some ribbons. You and I have got some things as a Christian that ought to garnish our life. You say, what are they? Glad you asked. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit, Amen. love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Those are things that accompany a, a Christian. Those are the fruit, not the fruits of the Spirit. No, no S on that. The fruit 
of the Spirit. I remember one time I was in a, somewhere and they were teaching on that and they had them. They, they were made it, they're trying to make a good example and they had the, you know, fruit of love and joy and peace and gentleness and, and had them laid out. You just come by and pick, pick out which one you want and whatever one you thought you had. You, that's not the way that works. That's, that is a fruit that has all those incorporated in it. You ought to have, you say, well, I've got some of them. No, you ought to have them all. You ought to have love. You ought to have some joy. Go out here on the, out here on the job and out here to the store, you ought to show some joy. Go out here and eat through Christmas season. Don't give them a gospel track if you're going to be mean to them. Right. Well, slip them one anyhow. Maybe they'll get saved in spite of yourself. Amen. But you know, that's the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. That's a real tree. Christmas tree's got some things on it, man. It just kind of livens it up a little bit. The fruit of the Spirit, the things that Jesus gives us to go in our life, man, helps us be the Christian that He wants us to be. Amen. He didn't just save us and just leave us on the side of the road. He wants to put those things, He wants to hang those things on you. Amen. So that when they look at you and say, man, you a real Christian Christmas tree. Right. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Now we got to go to 8 o'clock. Are you, are you a Christian Christmas tree or not? You'll have to decide. Those four things will determine that. I'm tired of seeing Christians who are just so plain and so drab, and they have no color, no zeal, no passion, no excitement, no purpose, no, nothing to them. They're just going through the motions. They're enduring their salvation instead of enjoying it. Right. I'm going to let you in on a little secret tonight, and then we're going to go. Most of us, most of us, listen to me, most of us, we're closer to the grave than we were to our birth. Amen. And we ain't got much more time to live for Jesus. And I would encourage you to let your little light shine. Amen. Amen. Have some excitement about living for Jesus. When you see Jesus, you know, you know, we, we, people you say, well, you know, if I just get to heaven by the skin of my teeth, I'll be happy. That's not the way you're supposed to get there. You get there by the grace of Jesus. And then you get there with these rewards of things that you've done for Jesus. So when you get there, you've got something to give back to Him. Amen. You don't get there and say, I just slipped in by the skin of my... That's not what heaven's about. Nobody slips into heaven. You're born again into heaven. Amen? So we need to be, we need to be grounded. We need to be glowing. We need to be green. We need to have some garnishings on us. And, man, we need to be the, a real Christmas tree. Amen. Now, let me ask you a question. Brian, do you have a real Christmas tree? Thank you. I didn't think he did. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> He'll never forget that, will he? Amen. Let's stand and sing tonight. If you're here tonight, maybe you've never been saved. Maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe you're backslidden. Maybe you're not following Jesus like you used to. Man, you need to get right with Jesus and be the kind of Christian that would be like a real Christmas tree. And man, get in this Word and get grounded. You need to come and pray. Now, come and pray. The altar's open. You need to get right with Jesus. Come and grab me by the hand and say, man, I need to get right. I need to get saved. And ask Jesus to come into your heart and save you tonight, and He'll do it. Pray a prayer like this. Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I can't save myself, but tonight... The best I know how, I'm giving my heart to Jesus and trusting Him as my Savior. Amen. You'll have a great Christmas. You can have, you have a great Christmas if you don't have a tree, if you don't have any lights, if you don't have any gifts, if you don't have any money. You can have a great Christmas because you've got Christ, and He's what Christmas is all about. Amen. Let's sing. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore.
of that. I'm going to ask you to gather around tonight. We're going to pray. I'm going to pray with the major. Major's got surgery tomorrow, and I know to him it's no big deal. He's had foot surgery before. I want to remind you something. Last time he had foot surgery, he got a blood clot in his leg from his, from his ankle to his knee. And on him, that's a long way. And, uh, you know, I've been, praying, I've been praying for him for 44 years. And I just thought today he's my son, and I love him. Man, you look a lot taller than me tonight. <laughs> and, uh, man, I, I, I want to I pray for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm shrinking up like those old dried-up trees. But I want to pray for the major tonight. I want you to pray for him that everything go well tomorrow. And won't be any, won't, won't be any aftermath, no blood clots. So we don't want that, do we? Amen? Amen. So let's pray. Can we everybody join up here? Lord, thank you for the day and for your blessings. And Lord, as I for my son, my firstborn son, Lord, I love him. Wow, I've, I've thought a lot about him. Lord, I, as, a, as, as the pastor, I'm, I'm moved, but as his dad, I'm really moved. And, Lord, I'm asking you tonight, Lord, to help him tonight to get a good night's rest and help the doctors and nurses tomorrow that everything will go well. And, Lord, that you'll just bless them. And, Lord, he won't have any, he won't have any bad issues or side effects and no blood clots, Lord, after the surgery. And it will be as easy and as smooth as he's anticipating and he's thinking and I thank you for him, Lord, that I have the privilege to be able to love you and love him and to love these people with him being right by my side. What a blessing he is. And Carl and our grandbabies, Lord, I love them. And, Lord, I pray tonight you'll just help them and bless them tonight and tomorrow again that all goes well. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Love you, buddy. This mountain a few years ago And I'll keep on climbing Till I can reach heaven's bright shore At times I grow weary My steps get tired Along this way But I'm gonna live in Canaan land One more real day That's where I 